Sup, homies? Do you ever have that one special game that you could play for hours on end every day without getting sick of it? Yeah, that's probably me with Smash Bros. Ultimate. I seriously cannot tell you how happy this game made me when it finally released. I never wanted to put it down. There was so much you could do in this game, from spawning 10,000 Waluigi's to questioning my sexuality. I could honestly play Smash Bros. Ultimate for the rest of my life if I wanted to. But then that got me thinking. What are some other games that have brought me comfort in times when I wasn't really feeling up to conquering the day? To start off, I'd probably say that there's way too many games to think of, so if you don't see your favorite game on this list, I'm sorry. You know how many games I had to narrow this down from? This list was hard to make. Anyways, let's talk about Wii Sports. You know, when I started this list, I told myself, don't do too many Nintendo games, you rascal. But damn it, I grew up with all of them. I'm a Nintendo kid, okay? Wii Sports is one of the first games I ever played, so of course I'm a little nostalgic over it. I remember waking up at 7 a.m. every morning and hearing that announcer telling me, nice on! It was such a rewarding thing to hear. You better believe I whipped this bad boy out at all the family gatherings. Also, it's one of the best-selling games of all time, and for damn good reason. If it wasn't for our Lord and Savior, Reggie Purple Pikmin, Pisame, we probably wouldn't have had this game bundled with our Wii's. Wii Sports is a game about sports. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Eh, wrong. This game is actually about strategy. Okay, maybe not really strategy. Maybe it was a game that was supposed to test the Wii's motion controls, but the points still stand. Ever bowl the perfect game? Ever hit three out of the parks in a row with bases loaded and win by mercy rule? Ever actually enjoyed playing f***ing golf of all games? Who would have guessed that Wii Sports is the crowning jewel of all sports games? Don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on other sports games. I just literally could not care any less than I already do about them. I mean, do I look like a guy that plays football? Wii Sports is so much replay value. I never want to stop playing once I start. And who can forget this game's iconic cast? led under the control of Matt, the mastermind himself. Matt from Wii Sports, giving neurodivergent kids anxiety attacks since 2006. Remember the Mega Man games? I played 1, 2, 3, X, 9, and Base, which, saying those names out loud makes me wonder if I just recited the names of Mega Man games or my Wi-Fi password. I gotta be honest, Mega Man 2 was the only prior Mega Man game I really liked. Well, I mean, Mega Man X was f***ing awesome, but I never beat it, nor did I get really far in it because the game is just really damn hard. But I'm not talking about either of those games. I'm actually talking about this one. I play this game every couple months or so when I need to just blow off some steam and feel like I can demolish everything in sight even when it's trying to kill me. This is bar none my favorite Mega Man game. And do you know why? Because this game, yes, this one right here lets you slow down time. You know what that means. I don't know what happened there. Giving me the power to slow down time at will so that way I can get the drop on enemies before they even have a chance to fight back. Not only that, the bosses are so inventive and the stages are just so damn fun. The weapons you get from beating all the robot masters are some of the most unique and like damn fun power-ups I've ever seen in a game. Plus look at this art style! I'm actually kind of mad at how long it's taken for another game to release. I mean, five years?! Not a lot of people have really played this game and it makes me sad. I've beaten this game like six times on Superhero and even then I still go back to play it every couple months or so. I don't know, maybe Maybe I'm just insane or something, but I wish we got another Mega Man game every year instead of a half-baked Pokemon game. Yeah, that's right, I said it, you plebs. This next game is probably one you haven't heard of, but it's a game that's based on one of my favorite TV shows from my childhood. This popular cartoon features anthropomorphic animals living their daily lives and telling some really funny jokes in the process. And I am, of course, talking about the regular show 3DS game, Mordecai and Rigby Day Bitland. What did you expect? A yellow sponge with an insanely fun 3D platformer from 2003 that released on the Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, and original Xbox? Hell no! That game is way too good and way too popular. I'm talking about a game that got me through middle school. This is one of the lesser known games on the 3DS, and there's probably a damn good reason why. Hydration is key. The game was received poorly because of a lot of glitches and questionable hit detection for certain enemies. But why is it one of your comfort games? I can hear you typing from your magnificent and grandiose abode on your GTX 3090. Well, I will respond to that question on my $350 computer by saying... I just think it's fun. <laughs> Regular Show was one of my favorite TV shows growing up, and I think I'd consider it one of my favorite kids shows, if you can even call it a kids show. And that's because this show is just damn funny. Cheese these nachos. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, you just want these guys to have a good day. So I got this game as a gift from my mother, who really hates anything related to video games, despite letting me play them for 17 years. Ha! <laughs> and that's kind of why I love it so much. It's an 8-bit inspired video game that stars two of my favorite cartoon characters beating the crap out of enemies from the show. The Destroyer of Worlds, the blondes from that one episode, an actual real life cheater, I, I mean, uh, 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 Garrett Bobby Ferguson. For the love of God, if Billy Mitchell tries to sue me for making a video that probably no one's gonna see, I might actually lose my f***ing mind. Out of all the games on this list, it's probably the one I haven't played in the longest time, but I used to play it a lot as a kid, so it still kinda counts. But uh, yeah, this game is just nice, and that's about all I can really say about it. It's nice, and I like it, okay? While we're on the topic of 3DS games, the first one I ever played was Kirby Triple Deluxe, and it was also the first Kirby game that I ever played. To think that a game this semi-obscure was the game that made me want a 3DS, it was honestly the commercial that played Verdi's DS Ray, Verdi's DS EA. It was honestly the commercials that played Verdi's DS Ray to the tune of Kirby consuming literally everything in sight. The game is 
nothing really spectacular. It's just kind of your average Kirby game. I don't really know why I like playing this game more than Planet Robobot because that game is better in pretty much every way. But for me, I think it's just the atmosphere and memories that I have with the game because I really did play this game in almost every opportunity I had. It might also be those memories of playing 3DS games with my friends at the lunch tables, but it could also be just because I think the game aged really well despite coming out during a time when just about every 3DS game was, for lack of a better word, underwhelming. This was a game I just really liked playing and had a lot of fun spending hundreds of hours into. Alright, alright, you kiddos had your fun, but now it's time for the real games to start heating up. May I introduce you to our good buddy who Catch has spent about 200 hours playing? Puyo Puyo Tetris. It's a game whose title can only be pronounced by someone who's not a total normie. Puzzle games were some of my favorites growing up, and I think Wario's Woods might be my favorite of all time, actually. That game alone is probably the reason why I have so much time invested in the NES Classic Edition on the Switch, but I almost never pass up an opportunity to play Puyo Puyo Tetris because I love not only the story mode, yes, there is a story mode for a Tetris game, yes! It's also the general theme of the game itself, which presents its world and characters in a pretty goofy fashion. The game has so many unique modes and ways to play both Tetris and Puyo Puyo. I gotta say, it really brings out the best gameplay elements of both. Hell, they even made a special version of the two games where they combine both Puyo Puyo and Tetris together. Along with different characters you can choose from, each game is a really dramatic experience. If you're playing against friends, every game will play out like the most tense and insane anime battle of all time. And that's why I think it's pretty rad. Okay, so this is a side note. Uh, I also have a high score of 8 million on regular Tetris, but don't tell anyone I'm actually good at the game because I want to have this to myself. The early days of the Nintendo Switch, probably the most nostalgic time in my life. And yeah, I know I say nostalgia a lot, but I'm not trying to act like a 14-year-old girl who just discovered Billie Eilish for the first time. I really mean that. The hype for the Nintendo Switch was something that just about everyone was excited for. I'm sure that I and pretty much everyone else couldn't stop looking up the news regarding this damn thing. And although nowadays it kind of collects dust as I've gotten busier with other stuff, it still remains as my favorite gaming console from the 2010s. Which is absolutely because of the games that released for this thing about six years ago? What the f***? God, it really has been six years. That's fucking depressing. <coughs> Uh, okay, so Shovel Knight. I love these games so much. I love all the Shovel Knight games, and I play them all pretty much to 100%. However, my absolute favorite of them by far is Spectre of Torment. Spectre does a little jig, how can you hate him? Feeling of satisfaction from learning this game inside and out, slashing through lanterns and using curios to fight bosses. Also, you get to slash through a freaking cannonball. How badass is that? Oh yeah, and did I mention that the music for this game is top notch? If you hate Propeller Knight's theme, you're objectively wrong. Also, I just listened to the Iron Whale theme when I'm doing homework. I cannot stress enough how much I want you guys to play Shovel Knight. It's probably the perfect indie game. Nothing can compare to this, in my opinion, as the true king of 2D platformers. Okay, next up is... Pikmin! Come on, it's Pikmin! We finally got a new game this year! Why don't you remember? I freaking love every Pikmin game that's ever been made. This one doesn't count. Aside from Smash, this is probably my favorite franchise from Nintendo themselves, and that's primarily because of three major factors. One, how goddamn adorable everything is. Everyone being so tiny with little oogly faces and tiny unnoticeable mouths just does something for me. I can never stop smiling looking at everything in this world. Two, how fun the gameplay is. Gathering an army of tiny little soldier guys and just, just, just chucking them at bigger things to knock them down and create more 1-1 one -one creature tokens just never gets old. And three... Ignacio. I've probably played Pikmin 3 Deluxe the most out of any Pikmin game, but I also can't help going back to the original game every now and then, and also emulating Pikmin 2 because... My brother in Christ. So anyways, moving on, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts again. Kingdom Hearts 2 is the best Kingdom Hearts game, and the sky is blue. Yeah, I think Dream Drop Distance is probably my favorite game aside from 2, but no other game has reached the unparalleled majesty of Kingdom Hearts 2. It's a game unlike any other, traversing through Disney worlds and helping the homies with their problems using the power of French weight. Doesn't that sound familiar? Everything in this game really shines, not just from a gameplay perspective, but from a musical perspective too. Trust me, I've talked enough about the music in this game for one day. And yeah, there isn't really much to say about Kingdom Hearts 2 that hasn't already been said. Everyone who's played it already knows why it's damn amazing. And now on to my last comfort game, which is one that I haven't played a lot of recently, but I need to let it be known how underrated and overshadowed this game is compared to all the others on this list. It's Golden Sun. Wow, an RPG that has a slow combat system, has many random and absurd secrets that take forever to figure out, and has a confusing plot. So why is this game one of my favorites of all time? Well, to be honest, I don't know. To be completely honest, I have a few gripes with Golden Sun, and it took me a couple months to beat once I started playing it, but I still believe that this game is just so well-rounded and so, so perfectly made that I can't help but love it. It just feels like 
the perfect RPG to play because of how unique the combat system is. The story, as mentioned before, is a little confusing, but if you can manage to comprehend it, you'll see just how cool it is. Golden Sun is a game that has aged to near perfection, and because of its incredibly well-designed development, I just can't help but respect it. I played this game a lot during my school musical when I was only about 14, and I remember so many Saturday rehearsals just sitting in the audience with my friends playing the game. No other game has made me happier like playing Golden Sun. It, it's, to me, it's like the Weezer of video games. Golden Sun is a game that needs to be experienced, not watched from afar. If you ever get the opportunity to play this game, either through a physical or digital copy, or if you want to sail the Grand Line looking for the One Piece and emulate it, I would say that this is the ultimate comfort game for those who want to take control of their own stories. So that was my list of comfort games. One could argue I'm not exactly picking the most niche of games, but most of these were games I grew up with and have a fond appreciation for. So if you enjoyed hearing me hyperfixate over games that I played for 700 hours, holy sh**, consider leaving me a thumbs up. You don't have to, but it's much appreciated. And that's about all I have for today. I'll catch you guys later. Take care.